Okay, so welcome to our very impromptu and informal introduction to EIT, well, specifically reconstruction for EIT. It's mainly going to be oriented to, towards electrical and beam stomography. Um, some of you um, are interested in magnetic induction tomography type problems, and I take the view that you should probably learn EIT first because it's simpler. <laughs> Right? So it's like a simple case of the magnetic induction cell forms. Um, and as far as applications, it doesn't matter whether you're interested in medical EIT, geophysical, um, weekly electric fish, I suppose, uh, or finding landmines, the mathematical methods are pretty much the same. So there's a few detailed things that are different. So um, the reconstruction, at least, is something we have in common. So... Um, I'd also like to say a welcome to people from Mexico, Uruguay, Canada and Australia who are following remotely via this camera. Uh, so that's also experimental, I'm not sure how well that will work. Um, on the screen over here, off camera, is the PDF that I've referred to on the blog, which is an excerpt from a chapter in a book written by Andy Adler, Romina Gaboa and myself. Um, and it's more detailed than we're going to talk about in this section, but I'll refer to it, and so for those following on the camera, you can look at the notes on the webpage. Okay, so um, I want to start by telling you very simply what EIT is. In particular, this lecture is about the forward problem rather than the inverse problem. So it's about what the physics does for us, the problem that physics solves, rather than the one that we want to solve, given some physical measurements. And so I have a very simple picture in mind, and I, uh, I suppose you might think that we're doing an experiment in a lab with a tank, because those are easy to look at and understand, in which we have a cylindrical bucket, and to it are attached some metallic electrodes, some number around the periphery. Inside, there's some conductive stuff, salty water would be typical. And what we do is we apply a voltage. I'm going all electrical here. That's a symbol for an alternating current. But um, we, we could think of it as a direct current. You could think of that just as a battery, if you like, applying a, a, a but, but something that arranged to apply a certain current. And then on some other electrodes, we attach effectively a voltmeter and measure the voltage. Physically, this is a picture to have in mind. In geophysics, They put some spikes in the ground and they measure voltage between other spikes. And so it's worth having these two pictures in mind. This could be the surface of the Earth, this is underneath the Earth, um, or it could be a small bit of skin or some other object. Um, that, uh, the, the idea, of course, well, the Earth is big and round, but from the point of view of sticking electrodes, we only put them on a little bit of it. You could take that view on a human body or some other. Okay, so um, I kind of like drawing pictures of this. What happens is that electric current comes in one electrode, goes through the conducting body, and comes out the other electrode. These, this is a, um, a cartoon showing the current streamlines. In other words, electrons are actually whizzing along these paths. Um, the voltage goes down from the current, let, let's think for the moment of direct current, the current's going in there and out there, and so the current is flowing downhill as far as voltage is concerned. So these are lines of constant voltage. And uh, you can see I've tried to draw them orthogonal to the current streamlines. So I want you to have, that's uh, the picture that we have in mind. Of course this is in three dimensions. The current streamlines are curves, but the constant voltage um, surfaces, the equipotentials, are surfaces. So you have to bear that in mind with this picture. And so when we stick some electrodes on to measure the voltage, we're measuring at the end of certain 
times of equal voltage. Okay, so what's the point of this? It's to find what's inside. Most inverse problems are about finding what's inside. No. All the inverse problems I work on are finding what's on the inside for measuring on the outside. And the idea is that instead of a, a uniform sea of salty water, we put some object in here with a slightly different conductivity. This will bend all the current streamlines. Not just the ones going through it, it'll bend all of them. The whole picture bends. The equipotential surfaces bend, we measure different voltage on our fixed electrodes. The idea of VIT then is to apply lots of voltages to different electrodes, sorry, lots of currents to different electrodes, measure lots of voltages, and try and infer the non uniform conductivity inside. So let, let me just draw this one. I mean, I make maybe a sort of consistency if I say I for current, and, and here the point is. It's just the same picture, but, but drawn in, in a half space. Now, those were meant to be blue, weren't they? Okay, it's the colour scheme. So, again, these are meant to be orthogonal. This one goes straight down there. Those are the uh, current streamlines. These are the equipotential surfaces for them. So, um, even if you're from a mathematical background, it's very useful to have this picture in mind. If you're from an electrical engineering background, these pictures will be very familiar and reassuring to you. Uh, so, you know, somewhere between the two, you need to develop the intuition about both the mathematics and um, the um, description of the electric current. So, now I want to say what, what we regard as the forward problem mathematically. So um, I'm going to build this up in several layers of detail. First of all, we're going to think of direct current. So you, you don't actually generally apply a direct current. If you apply a direct current to a person, they tend to, they tend to do this, right? Because it affects their nerves. So you tend to use an alternating current that doesn't have any nervous stimulation. Um, in principle, you could use direct current in geophysics, but you would find some certain fizzing around the electrodes as you electrolyze any any uh, solvents there. So, so you, you actually would change the direction of the current from time to time anyway. Otherwise you start doing electrolysis. So, so actually in, in practice you use alternating current in some way or another. But just for the moment, let's think of direct current. And um, in this sense, um, what do we have? Well, U as a function of x is going to be the, uh, the voltage potential. Voltage. I, I, I'm going to say potential um, because you might just call it the voltage or just call it the potential, but it's actually a potential for the electric field technically, so we call it either of those things. In any case, it's a scalar field and it's what you measure with a voltmeter if you stuck the voltmeter in your bucket of salty water relative to some fixed ground, and that's important. Voltmeters have two leads, a red one and a black one. You have to keep the black one somewhere, right? Uh, it doesn't matter because in the end only differences in voltage make any sense. But you just keep the black lead somewhere, this is what you put the red lead in, this is what you read on the voltmeter. Okay, so um, the gradient of U then is a vector field and actually minus that gradient is the electric field. Let's think about that for a minute. So, um, no, just E is electric field. I'm going to say J is minus. So that's the electric field vector. It's different at each point, but it's the it's the gradient, and uh, the gradient is the uphill pointing vector. If you think of u as being the height of a hill. Okay, so um, that's the electric field, and um, uh, we, we'll come on to talking about Maxwell's equations and why the electric field is the gradient of some scalar field. 
But that's the electric field, and now we have the current density, J. So this is the um, vector field that represents the flux of electric current. So I think it's helpful to think about fluid motion, uh, little particles in a fluid flowing along, electric currents just like that. You imagine charge carriers by, like the little particles going along. And they go along in the direction of the vector field J. That's not exactly the same as, as going strictly downhill for voltage. Okay, so, so charge carriers flow so notionally from a high voltage to a low voltage. And so you think they're just flowing downhill as far as voltage is concerned. Well, that, that's almost true. It's true in something that's homogeneous. But actually, um, uh, um, uh, so, okay, so I'm getting fairly confused here. Um, yeah, so I think I should probably should have put the minus sign in there. I, it's, it's interesting because if you think in EIT, I'm eventually going to set the divergence of this to zero, and then I won't care, care whether there's a minus sign, which is probably why I don't kind of have it immediately in mind which way I should do it. Um, so what does this say? Sigma is the conductivity. This is the um, current density. And sigma is the conductivity. So um, let me put this uh, into units. The electric field is, is actually in volts per meter. U is a voltage in volts. A gradient is a derivative, so it's in per meter. It's in volts per meter. This current is a current density. And so you measure current in amps. You, if you put a certain surface in and you measure how much current flows through that, then it's a certain current over an area. So to get the current, you integrate current density over area. So it's a density of current flowing across a surface. So, um, so this current density um, is, is obviously going to be, um, it's got to be in amps per meter squared. And so the conductivity relates those two things. It obviously has to be a coefficient here. And um, the conductivity measures how conductive the stuff is, the opposite of how resistive it is. And so this is actually Ohm's law. So this is Ohm's law. Ohm's law at school says that current's proportional to voltage. Ohm's law in a continuum says that current density is proportional to electric field. Okay. So this is how conductive something is. And that's what we're looking for. So, divergence.